Huh, I'm wearing the same shirt for this one. What is wrong with you, Gino? Anyway, Cage Carnival. Ah, so it's Cache Carnival, or at least we're reaching the end of Cache Carnival because I didn't do a video earlier on. So it's Cache Carnival, it's this celebration of um, diversity and creativity in geocaching. Um, people making creative caches, more than just mintins shoved in crannies and nanos in forests and micros and trees. Anyway, one thing I noticed very much so um, about the caching hobby in general is the creativity of containers that have come up and that brings me to this particular video because we got something over the um, over the new year that I think I could actually use to help make better hides and that is a 3d printer so this is a monoprice mini delta 3d printer from Amazon. Um, it's super entry level. It's crazy basic and the print area is tiny. I don't think I can print anything larger than about 110 millimeters on it. I think it's a good entryway into 3D printing at the very least. Um, and it's still pretty good for, you know, the burgeoning like first high geocacher kind of thing. So I got this, went on to Thingiverse. Uh, and just try to get inspiration and grab um, grab templates for things um, for interesting um, caches and so like the very first thing I printed was this so this is a puzzle cylinder um, this is the rugged version of the puzzle cylinder it's quite sturdy doesn't really dent um, with an impact of that it's really thick so it should last a while um, this was still when I was experimenting with a lot of um, print stuff, so the print's a little rough on the top there. But, the puzzle works really well. Especially when I could figure it out. <laughs> nope, there we go, yeah. So you've got that hollow space, and if you say have a bison, right, you can just drop the bison in there. I mean, remove the key ring, obviously, so you can drop it in there. And then seal it back up. And um, this little thing, has two prongs for hanging. So you can attach a cable or something in there and then hang it off a tree somewhere, um, obscure it somewhere, zip tie it somewhere, and just leave it for people to find. They have to solve the puzzle to get the bison tube that contains the geocache. I think that's pretty smart and I love that it's rugged and I love that it has these thick walls on both sides, um, which means that it's really good and, and, end and it hangs like this so no water actually comes into the container from here it's really hard for moisture to get in in this configuration because the entrance to the inner tube is all the way up here so that's pretty good and that didn't take long at all to print and now i can print with different colors but i mainly use black because let's face it this is australia most of our caches are going to be black if they're not green, and my green is neon. Uh, this is another puzzle container, nice big chunky cylinder. Uh, this one's slightly more evil than the last one, so it, the reset position is this, um, where you have these two points together. And basically, there's a notch inside, and notches on every interval. This is gonna take a while, here we go. There we go. That took a lot longer than it needed to. There you go. That's that's another place. Amazing space there for much larger containers. Heck, you could even make this just the core of it. Just put a um, Ziploc plastic bag in there with the log, and then you're good to go. It's nice. It's a little annoying because if you look at how this is, if you look at how this is lined up, you've got all of these notches which means that as you move it up if it's not the actual gap thing it notches and it stays there and you think you've gone across but you haven't really so a little bit of an evil container there you've got this container I refuse to open this container uh, because it took me a while to actually get it into the lock position I'm probably not going to use this in a real-world situation but this is an interesting puzzle container now there's an inner um, inner area in here which you can clearly place something in um, but I'm really not gonna subject people to this thing because 
honestly, compared to some of the other puzzles that have come up, people hate cast puzzles um, of, of a build similar to this. I love these, but it's not gonna happen. But a personal favorite of mine that I got to showcase at an event that I went to um, is called the Don't Forget the Pen Cache. So you've got this cache, um, and this is being prototyped by me right now. You can see I've still got a lot of work to do in terms of like just finding a stick to align it, and everything. But it's a standard looking like it's a standard looking kind of container. It's got a lid, it's got a body, and all of that. But I can't open it. It's plopped in there. You can't just open it. Except for the fact that it's got a little hole in the side over here. And the reason it's called a don't forget to bring a pen cache is that you need a pen to open it. So you just shove it in there, press it until you hear the click, and up it goes. And there you go. Okay, you've got a little latch mechanism over here which you can push at with the pen. There's a spring holding it back, obviously. There's a few, there's a, this is a little more involved. There's a few more parts to it. And then it locks and then it stays locked until you can reopen it with a pen. A little bit of the logistics. It was nice to take it there because I got some feedback on how to make this a better hide. So I will take that into account. Um, but in the meantime, um, let's see if I can uh, perfect this and make it into an actual sensible hide and that'll be interesting at the very least so yeah it's it's an up and like i mean it's been an up and coming technology for a few years now but we're now at the point where this is basically like this and printers like it uh, and similar other things in the 3d printing world are very consumer accessible now if you really want to get to it now is as good a time as any to actually like mess around with the concept of designing stuff in 3D, getting into 3D printing. Um, starting off with this, the barrier for entry is low, but really, it's a tool. It's something that's come along um, that has the capability to assist in the hobby. And I really look forward to seeing more 3D printed geocaches as we go forward. So yeah, it's an, it's an example of how people can exercise their creativity. And I think it's an excellent topic for Cache Carnival. So there you go. 3D printing for geocaches. Who knew? Probably the people who started. Anyway, enjoy the rest of Cache Carnival. Hope you get the 500 points. See you later.